Welcome to Texas Truck Channel, I'm Craig, and behind me we've got a truck again. We got the Honda Ridgeline HPD Performance Pack. And on the exterior, what that means is we get a few extra nice details with that HPD, HPD Performance Pack. That stands for Honda Performance Development. It's kind of their version of TRD. So what we get with that is we get a little bit more aggressive everything. We get the extra body cladding, which is good for off-road and gravel and that sort of thing. The nose is a little more aggressive as well. We also get some bronze wheels which we'll check out in the shop a little bit more. Maybe we'll weigh those suckers. And then on the bed, we get a nice sticker that says HPD. And in case you're not sure what it's, it is, it actually says Honda Performance Development because I had to look it up, I wasn't real sure either. With that, that's about it for the HPD. Let's move on to the interior, see if there's anything, any new bits in there from, with Brian. Oh baby, Honda's got them a truck. And if you've ever been in the Honda Pilot, then you've been in this front row, that's for sure, because nothing is different. The good news is it's based on the Pilot. And it's a little bit based on the Odyssey, which means the packaging is killer, just like every Honda uh, product ever made. Honda's packaging game beats everyone. You've got cubby holes in the doors, multi-levels. You've got cup holders in the doors, cup holders in the console. You've got a console lid that works like a good tray, and then it opens up for more console. It's just storage everywhere. And that's something that its competitors won't do, mainly the Ranger and the Colorado Canyon. Those are good, this is great in that regard. As far as rear seat legroom is concerned, it's about the same as those two. You do have a, uh, not the same thing as the pilot in the second row. It's a little bit shorter and the seats sit a little bit higher. It gives you a stadium seating feel, which means your kids can see everything you're doing in the front and judge your driving. They're really good at that. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's based on the sport trim level, which gives you non-leather seating surfaces and also a urethane steering wheel. As far as urethane wheels go, this one feels really nice. It has a texture to it. It doesn't feel cheap. We like it. You keep your captain's chairs armrests in the front, which are very, very comfortable. And it just works. It's easy to get along with. We're happy with that. It's also quiet on the highway. So, all that boring stuff covered, let's jump into the shop and get technical. Welcome to the under the hood portion of the Honda Ridgeline. What you see here is what you've seen for a while. It's the J35 Honda series. And that's, the, that's what that means is, that means 3.5 liter single overhead cam, four valve with VTEC. Yeah, you heard me right, single overhead cam. But it's got the VTEC, baby, and that's what we all care about because when that sucker kicks in, <clears throat> it feels good. You're gonna see that in the drive portion here in a minute. But here's what that's good for. It's good for 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. It's good for 18 city, 24 highway in the 2021 models prior to the redesign of the power bulge hood and some other stuff that made it more truck. It got 25 on the highway. So there's a little bit of a, a dinger there. We've been averaging 21 driving around in all kinds of different scenarios, so that's where we're at. We are hitting the right pedal a lot. We've heard other owners getting higher, but it is what it is. We're averaging less than what some other people have gotten, but we do that in every vehicle we get, so there's that. It's paired to the nine-speed ZF transmission, which is wonderful, and that came out in 2020, replacing the previous Honda six-speed, which was, we'll just say, it's a good thing the ZF nine-speed's in there, and if you're looking to get a Ridgeline, try to get that if you can. Also standard, now in the ridge lines is the torque vectoring all-wheel drive. I think Honda calls it IVTM4 or something like that. I'm not sure what all that stands for, but that's what uh, Google's where y'all can look that up. Um, and you can comment below how I should have looked it up prior to this. But with that, what that means is it sends 70% of the torque to the rear wheels, and then that 70% of the torque, it can split 100% to the left or the right. All in all, adds up to meaning it's pretty good actually for an all-wheel drive package. It's not a two-speed transfer case. But with the ZF9 speed, you do get a 20 to one crawl ratio, and that's pretty good for what this is. With that, let's turn it over to the underneath portion because there's some cool stuff going on in there and some really cool wheels I want to hear more about with Brian. Time for the nuts and bolts portion. Wait, wait, Brian. Oh, oh thank you, thank you. Okay. Sorry, it's a little hot in the shop. We don't have AC in here quite yet. Uh, starting with the nuts and bolts portion of the Honda Ridgeline. Let's just get it out of the way. Bring on the rubber. Okay, these are, you, that's right, you see the gold? You see that? These are 18 inch inky wheels. I know, they're made in Japan, that's pretty cool. All the Honda boys rejoice, that's amazing. These are Firestone, they're 245 6018s, and man, they are a highway tire. They have a little bit of sidewall to make you think there's something there, but there's not. All that covered, it is quiet and it handles really well. We like them, I think it's a really good tire actually. Now, let's cover the mechanics. Up front, traditional McPherson strut. A steel knuckle for strength, and it's also rear steer. Brakes, you have a floating caliper situation front and rear, which is totally fine for this situation. Dual piston up front, single in the back, as you can see right here. The front hubs are vented. The actual hub hat has a vent in it. That works pretty well, although in Texas heat, you can still warp these, just saying. Now, 
Moving to the back, much more interesting because in a truck you don't see independent rear suspension very often, but you've got it right here on this one. You have a rear sway bar with a very clever design, and it's also going in front of the truck bed trunk, the tr trunk as we call it, for extra storage. They've just been really clever with that. You have a four link multi-link out back, and man, does it work. It rides really well, but it doesn't feel wallowy. Keep in mind, this chassis is used on a lot of cars. The Passport, the Pilot, the Odyssey. This does not feel like a minivan, even though some would say it's the minivan of trucks. It's certainly not. It rides as it should. Now, the most important thing here, Craig's already mentioned, torque vectoring. In case you didn't know what that means, that means that the rear diff can send power 100% left or right. And this is a transversely mounted front wheel drive layout in the front. So the, the fact that it can send more than 50% of the power to the rear is really, really impressive. And on inclement weather, you're probably gonna have some fun with this. So all that covered, let's get on the road and see if it's any good. It yes, is sir. time to launch it and see what that J35 is all about. And torque vectoring, baby. The ZF9 and torque vectoring all-wheel drive and HPD stickers. Let's go, hit yeah, it. And VTEC. Oh, there it is. That kicked in. It's off. Back on. Kicked in. Off. Oh, kicked there in. It is. You can hear it. And 60. It's like having a four barrel carburetor that two barrels open up. <laughs> two barrels right? open up. It's just like that, yeah. I mean, it's the modern version of that. It totally is. And also, by the way, when you're on the exterior of this truck, there's no simulated sounds in this. When you're outside of that and you hear the the it sounds just like that. When you hear the VTEC kick in, yeah, when you're on the outside of the truck, it sounds like you're banging a shift. Like, it sounds awesome. It does. We were filming B-roll a minute ago, and yeah. it, was, it was fun. So, 060 and what? Uh, about 8 something ish. 8.117. So, look, the big magazines have quoted this at 6.2, and I'm calling 100% <laughs> bullshit in the real world. And let me back that up a little bit. We do real world testing. We're not doing VHT, we're on a uh, public road surface. Right? So we're not doing any Yeah, we ain't trucking around. We're not trucking around, and it is 104 trucking degrees outside. Uh, that's for sure. It is hot. So this thing is never going to get close to its manufacturer rating anyways. Not but today. I, but I can tell you, on a cool morning at least, I believe a seven second out of this. I, I really I, it do. Feel, the butt dyno feels like a mid sevens or low sevens mid possibly low sevens, on certain yeah. days, which like all vehicles are better on cooler days. We, totally. We know that, so. Totally. Yeah. Okay. I know that. R ride and drive. For independent rear suspension, yeah, torque vectoring all wheel drive, ZF9 C9 speed, all that. The engine, the same engine for 20 years, right? How does, how does the package work? Man, it is just easy to live with, and it's nothing wildly impressive. But you know what, it doesn't have it doesn't have any shifting problems. It no, you this. think about the Ford Ranger, or you think about the eight speed, the 10 speed Ranger, or the eight speed in the Colorado having mm -hmm. issues. This is a ZF9, it doesn't have any of those problems, right? The eight speed in the GM that apparently will kill you. The internet says, Yeah, apparently, it'll stab yeah, you. And you're right, and the Ranger, yeah. 10 speed and the Ranger is can't clunky. pick a gear, yeah, can't this is just fun. silk, and it's you know, it's mm -hmm. quiet on the highway, it's very quiet. And while it's not the most impressive thing, I like it quite a bit. So. Speaking of quiet. It should have a really good audio system because it's quiet, so you can appreciate a good audio mm. system in this. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. thoughts on the audio system? Not great. <laughs> Just not very good. And I've noticed in certain songs, I'm not sure if you picked this up or not, but I, I play the song for you to hear it, and at random, it'll move sound just to the tweeters in the front, it sounds like. Yeah. And it, then it, it goes off again. There's something going wrong with the bass in the mid-range, and it's... The sound uh, processing, is, I, processing yeah, is... It's weird. ...funky in here. Yeah. I want to mention the Honda Sensing, because one of the things that Honda's added to this platform that's been out for a while now, uh, and I'm talking about the pilot platform and passport platform. Right. They've added the radar cruise control and they've added the auto high beams. Uh, it's standard now it's, and just every region has it. Right. They don't work great. The okay. auto high beams are so sensitive. Any road sign, it's immediately turning off. And so you're out in the country driving around, it just never comes on. Anything. And also, you have to just manually take over. Well, and also the headlights are LED on low beam and incandescent halogen on high beam, yeah. which is, and you can tell it turns yeah, yellow. It's pretty obvious. It's kind of weird. And then the radar cruise control is the most herky, herky jerky radar cruise control I've been in since it first came out in any car. I haven't used it, but I believe you. So um, I will say one last thing for wrap this up. The ride and drive is very agreeable. Yes. But it's not so soft that it doesn't feel like it has some payload and does some trucky duties. Right. So I, I, I like it. I think the ride and drives really well. All right. And on that, time for the hill test. You darn skippy. Let's do it. VTEC. All right, it's time to do the dreaded hill test for the Ridgeline HPD. Let's see if we can handle it. Brian, what goodies do we have to play with? We have traction control off, which actually tells you stuck vehicle assist mode. Okay, that's good because you might get stuck. Uh, it's it's very possible. We also have drive modes, and the drive modes here are off-road specific, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the viewers real quick. 
I'm gonna toggle it into, you know, we got mud, snow, sand. We have rock at all here. Uh, let's go with, let's go with sand? Yeah, sand, that seems right. Sand seems right. It's probably gonna be the most wheel spin too, that you're gonna need. Which we're gonna need. Um, also, look, we know the nose of this thing has a low approach angle, and on paper it should not make the hill, but we've got a trick up our sleeve. We're gonna hug, we'll take a different line. We're gonna hug the right side, like just completely. Less aggressive. Less aggressive. The softest line that we are aware of here, and you're gonna have to be eyes. If it's gonna hit, I can't roll back, so I can't get up on it. You gotta tell me when I'm coming up on it. See if that 21 crawl ratio comes into play here. Up from 14 from the previous generation. Do you think it'll make it? No. Do me you? Do you? No, no I don't. All right, let's do this. Okay, here he goes. He's going up this right here. Pretty steep. We're gonna check nose for him. Making it up so far. Okay, we're hitting the bumper. Okay, we're still okay. Come on. Up here. Problem is, he's gonna have to get momentum. Problem is, these tires are not helping. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, come on. Okay, as we can see here, the <laughs> he knows doesn't have a chance. No, not happening. Not at all? No. Okay, well, um, we tried. I guess it tells you know about the comfortability of this. Although, if you're doing beach stuff, I think you're covered. If you're doing inclement weather, you're definitely covered with the all-wheel drive. You do have torque factory and all that good stuff. We just can't get up rocky terrain. You get to the spot. We got to the spot without a problem. With highway tires. We got to the spot with highway tires, and I will say this. I've got a trick that I think will work, and we'll get to the closing comments on that and what I would do to get over this. Okay, let's wrap it. All right. It's time to get our final thoughts. Favorite part. Time for some objective subjectives and some closing uh, thoughts we have on this thing after having it for a week. And let's start with objectives and subjectives. Okay. So, Hit first it. off, objectively, Brian, this is still a crossover and not really a truck, and we've kind of been joking about it all day. What do you think? Subjectively, I think that's not totally wrong, but I would argue that a lot of people that buy this thing it's full on truck in their mind, and guess what? It's gonna do everything they need it to do. Fair enough. If you've got a boat, most boats are under 5,000 pounds in our area. It's yeah. gonna handle it. Good it point. has all wheel drive to handle dirt roads and that kind of stuff. It's way more truck than people give it credit for. Fair enough. Objectively, Brian, it has all wheel drive, torque vectoring all wheel drive, sending 70% of the torque to the rear we talked about, which means it can off road. It can. Subjectively, it cannot. No, uh, and, and now look, it has the, the uh, traction tools, but there's no, as you saw in the hill test, it just can't get over things. It's too low. Okay. It's just too low. Brian, objectively, HPD has a Baja race truck, which and they helped with this truck with HPD stickers, mm -hmm. and that should do something. It does nothing. Oh. Mechanically, that has nothing on this truck, and I would say that's the first thing I would not get on it. Mm. Not trying to rip on Honda too much, but it's just not a meaningful package beyond just appearance. So, I'm, and let's carry on with what you talked about there. You said you would not get that. How would you spec this truck, and what would you do? I would do the sport trim, which this is, mm -hmm. uh, for getting HPD, and then I would just get the color that I like and move on. Then you can see like $38,000 out the door. Right. That's a bargain. That's a hell of a bargain. Plus, you can actually find it at dealers right now. At MSRP, yeah. which is not, you're not having 10K over, and guess what? It's a really good, I'll even say it, truck. Ooh. Okay, Brian, here's what I would do. Hmm. We saw the hill portion and the struggles we had there. We did, yeah. yeah. I would do exactly what you're, you say, except instead of the money I would have spent on the HPD package, which is about, about three, 3500 grand. three grand, whatever, yeah. I would get a Traxta two inch lift. I would okay. get a little bit more aggressive tire, maybe a Yoko Geo Land or something like that. Quiet but grippy and dirt, yeah. Possibly some skid plates, I'm not sure, but I think all those, those things combined will get me up over that hill test, no problem. I think it would, and I think the skid plate's gonna be needed. I really do. And then I think you have a pretty cool truck. Truck, I said truck. You said truck. And look, this is nothing new, Like right? The car truck is not new, and this is a booming segment too. Honda's been doing it longer in recent history. You know, El Camino, let's forget that. That's our dad's dad's generation. Maverick, Santa Cruz, this. There's three, and yep. they're all different sizes. Yes, this is the biggest one, right. and as far as mid-size segment trucks go, right. this is the most comfortable. I agree. And look, this thing's got, it's got the room of Ranger, but it's wider. It's cavernous and it's quiet. I think it's quieter than a Ranger yeah. or a Canyon. So really that's my thought on it. And really there's, I really want to talk about this. There's two people that would buy this. Okay. In particular, one is going to be the person 
that their Honda guy got out of a truck. I get it, right? That matters to them. And two is the person that just simply will not conform to society. I can't have a yep. 150. Actually, I can't have a Silverado. Yep. It's gotta be a Mazda 2. Wait, it's too, too far. Sorry, right, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Easy. But the person that needs something different, they're gonna go here. Yeah, No. and I know some people like this, exactly what you're talking about, and they fit the stereotype. Brian, yeah. though, but before we end this, because we need we need to wrap, land the plane here a little bit, and yeah. it's getting really hot, and one of the things this truck has is it has a, uh, you can put ice back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out, a beverage uh, that is very fitting for this truck, and I think it's the only thing you can get in this truck. <laughs> <laughs> because you know this thing doesn't conform to to uh, standards, and uh, when you're uh, not conforming to things, it's no laws, white claws, and it's time for that because that's <laughs> what kind of drink this truck has. So bottoms up, great shoot. Stay tuned, watch more on TexasTruckChannel.com, yep, all the all socials, stuff. Snapchat, socials, whatever. We're not socials. on there yet, but Brian's gonna get us on there. Right, on and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'm not gonna drink this. <sighs> no laws, baby. Whoa, whoa. <laughs>